I got warm memories of, uh, uh, he's since passed on now, I, I, I understand he, he's been gone for, um, uh, for a few years, but Bud um, was his name, and uh, Bud Porter. And he was originally from the States, he was, uh, he was from Vancouver Island, and he brought a wealth of experience. And I can't re recall exactly how I learned about, about Kesso. Um, my father had moved us from different reserves. We were living in the city because he was pursuing his degree as the first First Nations man to, um, he was told us at least to, to get a doctorate degree from the University of British Columbia, brought us to the city. Um, I had uh, uh, gone to school there and graduated, gone on to university, and was interested in how to give back to my community, both you know those who are living in our, in our villages as well as in the city and didn't really know how to get mo moving. And, and probably the term now is social entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. My interest was to generate a business where, where I would be in charge of, of affairs, would be in charge of you know, cutting my own paycheck and hiring people, and, um, but, but contributing back as well. And um, I reached out to Kesso and they sent Bud my way. And I just remember having these great exchanges with him. He was so generous with his experience, had great stories to tell. But more than anything, I got a sense of confidence. He would say, okay, um, Sean, this is a little bit of homework I need you to do. And I would go away and I would start putting in the dreams and ambitions of, of things that we wanted to accomplish. It was, when I say we, it became a family venture, my wife and I, my parents, a company called UMI Human Resource Development. We ended up delivering hundreds of training programs and we had dozens of staff run hundreds of programs. And you know, I meet, I meet former students of mine all over the country who are thriving in the work that they do. And all based on somebody instilling a little bit of self-confidence and giving you a few tools and somebody to lean on in the early uncertain part. Absolutely brilliant. I'm forever grateful and it, it's led to so many other um, experiences that I've had the fortune of having since then. There's a real thirst and need for support building capacity um, right from the aspirations of an individual entrepreneur, of which we've got lots of aspiring entrepreneurs like myself, um, to m more broad need for corporate um, capacity support and mentorship. And experts and those experienced in industry and business, um, whether as an entrepreneur in large corporations, whether domestic or, or global in nature, those are all skills that are desperately needed by First Nations. But even more important to me is an, an opportunity that emerges for reciprocity, that which hasn't been there before. For First Nations to learn about what it takes to build a, a, a business plan, to execute it, to achieve success. Uh, there, there's the, reciproc the, the, the reciprocity nature of, of the exchange now for First Nations values to contribute to a vision for business and industry uh, in Canada and in the world. Um, the relationship of people in the environment, the relationship of people with other people. And so to take um, some of those hard skills, including the more recent developments in business and industry of um, social corporate responsibility, the development at the United Nations level of the global compact, that we've got responsibilities to each other as people. We certainly have a responsibility to, to ensure all human beings have the opportunity for prosperity. And one element that mentorship and leadership through uh, a group like Kesso can provide is that opportunity for reciprocity. Um, I think the volunteer advisors or, or, or VAs, and it's, it's probably thoughts for both the VA as well as, as, well as the client, if you will, um, be it myself or anyone else. What's, what's brilliant is that these individuals um, are offering generously of, of themselves in a volunteer capacity. What's great is that a guy like that I had the privilege to, to get to know, Bud, brought international experience, not encumbered by the necessity to move a project along for his company in the moment, in the political and, and economic context within which these conversations now take place, including the issue of title and rights, of consultation, accommodation, and of free prior informed consent. And so when I had the opportunity to, to meet and have the benefit of a mentor, it's where that, those principle of relationships start to come into play. And for the client and the VA to know that they, they're not encumbered by the uh, volunteer advisor you know, having any particular agenda, having to, having, to, having to be put into place. Because there does exist a lot of mistrust, a lot of fear on the part of First Nations about you know, the motivations of those coming from the outside because it hasn't been a good experience. 
So I can attest that, you know, um, when there's goodwill on, on each side of the equation, the benefits and the, and the results can be powerful. And I'm hoping that that is a theme going forward, um, that is one of reconciliation and the idea that First Nations are going to make, um, when they're stronger, are going to make for a stronger Canada. Tackling, tackling a dream means breaking it up into, into small steps and realizing that there, there isn't any easy way. There's always that notion that there's a hard way or a harder way. That the harder way is if you don't give it 100% and if you don't do the hard work. But there is easy at the end of the road if you do do the hard work. It does get easier. You do get better at what you're doing. Whatever, whatever it is that, that you're aspiring to do, whether it's a business or, or becoming a, a professional hockey player or an actor or a musician, or a doctor or a carpenter, that it is always about the hard work of putting into practice the skills that you're learning. And, and getting launched early though, and, and having a bit of a game plan and a map um, drawn out for yourself is really step number one. And people can do that through all sorts of uh, sources. You can, you can find support online. You can reach out to organizations like Kesso and find individuals who have a wealth of experience. That is the old ways of First Nations, is to look to the elders. and. I haven't really called uh, a Kesso advisors elders, but many of them are so successful and have been in careers for so long. They are our elders in our society. And in First Nations culture, one never retires. It's always about giving back. And it doesn't surprise me that um, successful entrepreneurs and captains of business and industry would say, you know what, I'm not done giving back to my community or, or my country, and here's a way to do it. And you know, you have to commend these individuals because that's what's gonna make us stronger over the long run.